Hallelujah. All praises to the Elohim, the power, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And out of his only begotten beloved son, the Holy Messiah, who's currently sitting at his right hand as we speak. It's your brother Malachi Maccabee, Order Mel Kills, a dead count. STL Israelite sect of the Nazarenes, Hebrew Israelite Radio Network. Back at it real quick uh, to address some blasphemy I've been hearing. You understand? I mean, it ain't a new doctrine. It's been around for a little minute. Uh, but it's the same soup warmed over. Like one of the elders always say, same old soup just warmed over. And we're dealing with the conception of the Holy Messiah. They dig. Um, there's a lot of brothers running around spewing madness trying to say that Joseph is the biological father of the messiah you understand and uh not only that they go even a step further and try to fire shots like if you believe that his mother was a virgin when she conceived him that that's a devil doctrine i've heard that before now this this latest character got the nerve to say it's blasphemy of the holy spirit you understand and then speaks on the holy spirit as if it's a high level of sexual activity you understand? So this is how far these people will go to uh, promote their agenda, you know, and not really confess who the Messiah is because you can't arrive at the conclusion that Joseph is father if you just read the story for what it is. You dig? Watch the Jedi mind tricks Israel. I've been watching these cats for years. Well, not these cats I'm addressing because they ain't even the root of the problem. Uh, the, the Sakari sect, they're not even the root of the problem. The root of the problem is they blasphemous elders out of New York. You know, he just a, a reinvented a version of them from back in the early 90s, late 80s and all that. So but but the doctrine that they started teaching, he's still spewing. You understand? And understand this. You can't read that story straight through. Right. Without jumping somewhere else to try to prove your point. You know why? Because they really don't believe what's written. See, that's the difference between. uh my brothers and then most of these cats you call brothers you know we wholeheartedly believe in the entire book you understand ain't no you know what i'm saying jedi mind tricks ain't none of that you dig again this boy had the nerve and i'm talking about the the light skin uh the leader y'all of y'all the sick the light skin uh uh brother uh alazar him you dig this negro had the nerve to say the Holy Spirit is basically when a nigga get horny. When the most I put a high level, what this boy say? The boy say the most I put a spirit, and he said of about four. He was stuttering like a mug because he ain't know what he was gonna say. The boy say the most I put a spirit of 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 high elevated sexual drive on Joseph. That's what it meant that Mary was found with child of the Holy Spirit. It was Joseph and his high sexual drive. Go on and say it. Just say the Holy Spirit is when a nigga get horny. What's a high sexual drive? Huh? What's the spirit of a high sexual drive? That's when niggas get horny and need to hit him something. That's what you saying. You dig? And on the reels, that's what all the elders that came before you, that's what they've been saying too. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first question. Is the Holy Spirit when niggas get horny? A high level, what that boy say? A high elevated sexual drive. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. You understand? So let's address that right out the gate. Matter of fact, the name of the video, he, he claimed he was going, the uh, name of the video on their channel was debunking the so-called virgin birth, right? Start around, start at the minute mark at the 24 minute mark at 24 and 20 second, 24 minute and 20 second minute marker and listen on in. Listen on in. He go right into it in a, in a petty attempt to hold on to their doctrine. You know why? Because these men are carnal. They're not spiritual. You understand? They really don't understand. They really don't believe what this thing is all about. You know what I'm saying? They're pushing the doctrine of men. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, got people thinking they deep. Ain't none of these niggas deep. And on, and on some real, everybody out the box finna get hit. Everybody out of order finna get hit. Bombs away. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you keep y'all keep spewing this madness. We putting all y'all on notice. You're not qualified to teach. Shut down. You run around talking about your, uh, uh, commanding general. Your Honda is the third in heaven and the lead over Israel. You're not qualified to teach. Shut down. You run around here talking about Joseph is the Messiah's father. You're not qualified to teach. Shut down. 
shut down. Everybody that hold this scripture is not qualified to teach. Why do we say that? Because your research ain't thorough. Your investigation ain't thorough. You understand? It's like everybody ain't a priest. Everybody ain't a prophet. Everybody not a teacher. Most of these new age flunkies on YouTube ain't qualified to teach. And that's just real. So, hey, it's shutdown time. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get to the point to where you call them the power of the most high, which is the Holy Spirit, when niggas get horny, you understand? It's time to shut down. And shout out to my bro, uh, Azor Bon Israel, because he just basically let it be known the other day while I was rapping to him that, uh, oh, this is a psyop. All this is psychological operations because men wouldn't be saying certain things like that. Like the 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 Sakari cats come out the GMS cats who said it was I right to rape. You know what I'm saying? Psyop, shut down, stop that. They teaching lawful rape. You not qualified to teach. Shut down. Flat out, you non messianic and you ain't don't believe in the Messiah. You not qualified to teach. Shut down. That's what we saying. All right, so let's get into this real quick. Let's address the whole Holy Spirit being a high, say what that boy said again, high elevated sexual drive when niggas get horny. All right, so let's deal with this real quick. Let's go to Psalms 51. Let's go to Psalms 51. Just real quick, talk about the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to read straight through the story of Israel, and then we're going to get more precepts to show why virgin birth. You understand? Ain't no spookism. And for the record, we don't worship Mary. Mary better had been worshiping how she's supposed to worship. We don't worship Mary. Understand that we're not Roman Catholics, huh? but we are soldiers for this truth and we understand what's in the scripture. And you know what? Most of y'all believe the scripture tamper with anyway. I'm surprised I ain't heard nobody say the Romans done put that in there. The Romans done put that in there. Because that's all we've been hearing. You know what I'm saying? All in the, the desperate attempt to hold on to your toilet bowl doctrine out of one West. And that's and that's the root of all this. All that reincarnation talk, all that Joseph is the Messiah father, all that um, this, the, the, the Negro said he's, he's the comforter, just got raided. You know what I'm saying? Now it's the, the general claiming he's the general over everybody. You know what I'm saying? Now you got men teaching that certain men might be Paul reincarnated. You see how much like a little leaven, how it done leavened the whole lump. And it's so bad to where these men in their mind think they the ones that started this Israelite thing in the United States. Boy, that is a lie. Y'all really need to do y'all research, man. You feel me? Uh, the Israelites, the, the, the Israelites didn't start out of one West UPK. Especially my brothers down here, man. That my brothers was already banging. Like the elders that taught my elders, man, they was already banging before UPK was even established in 69. What you talking about? Men are proud. You understand? It's going to get us destroyed. Look, Israel, repent. You ain't up under the orders of none of these niggas. Come on back to the most high and serve him in sincerity and truth and stand up for what's real. You understand? Don't let nobody uh, pull no Jedi mind trick on you and got you thinking the Bible tampered with and you can't trust what you reading with your own eyes, man. The great falling away is coming. That head of that Sakari camp, you ain't qualified to teach, boy. Shut down. Shut down. All right. So let's get this Psalms 51 real quick. Psalms 51. Show y'all how this go, man. Boy, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit is basically when Negroes get horny. A high elevated, a high elevated sexual drive. That's what the Holy Spirit is, according to them Sakari cats. You know what I'm saying? They some new cats anyway, man. They novices. They ain't been around that long. You understand? But I heard doing their thing, trying to, at least. You know what I'm saying? But that's blasphemy, y'all. And for you to say the virgin birth doctrine is blasphemy, you lied on the Holy Spirit. And you know it ain't no forgiveness of that. So for any of you little brothers that's following him, hey, man, y'all better get up out of there. You better get up out of there, man, and come up under the banner of the Messiah. You feel me? And serve him. That's He the only one we owe something to. He's the one sent by Yahweh. You feel me? And if we're going to dedicate our life because he died for us, man, we need to go ahead and lace these boots up and give all our devotion and dedication to the one Yahweh sent so we can get back to Yahweh, man. Period. You don't owe none of these Negroes out of none of these camps no devotion. Like, you're going to sit up under this Negro kneecaps. He a novice, man. Is you serious? That boy's a novice. Huh? Guess what? Y'all legends in your own mind, you're going to see today. Go back to the drawing board with this and shut down. You're not qualified, huh? All right, Psalm 51. 
John 51. And this right here, this song right here has to do with <laughs> when David got horny. Huh? And when he did something he wasn't supposed to be doing. So was that the Holy Spirit that was on David when he seen Bathsheba bathing? And then he went and took her and had Uriah killed and then went and laid with her? Was that the Holy Spirit? That was a high elevated sex drive on David. David got horny. Huh? But David knew he tripped. I'm going to start this. I'm going to read Psalms 51. I'm going to read 1 through 5 and I'm going to jump down to uh, 8 through 11. All right, Psalm 51 and 1. Have mercy upon me, O Yah. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Verse two, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Why acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee only against thee. The only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judges. Verse 5. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Huh? And in sin did my mother conceive me. Let me jump down to verse. And look, is that what y'all saying? Are you are, are you saying that David was prophesying about the Messiah being birthed through sin? Mm, if you, okay, and if you ain't saying that, you just saying, all right, Joseph had sex with his betrothed wife, you know, got her knocked up because he couldn't control his loins. And then how in the hell are y'all going to try to compare just men in the Bible, righteous men that wasn't living in Babylon, to how niggas think her in Babylon? Like, think about it, man. If that was your girl, you know, you ain't trying to wait, man. Well, girl, come on. We already promised. Come on. Let me let me stick it in just a little bit. Just, 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 the, just the top part of it. I ain't going to go all the way in. How are you going to put how we grew up and the mentals that we didn't grew up here in Babylon and compare it to Joseph, a just man, huh? And Mary, a virgin. How are you going to compare that? How are you going to compare the two? You feel me? As if they, as if Joseph was like, move your hand, Mary. Come on. Stop it, Mary. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit, girl. Look, it's all good. It's all good. Your daddy, he lying going to trip. I've already paid the dowry. Move your hand, Mary. Let me just stick it in a little bit. You gonna act like how we get down or how we got down here in Babylon is what we reading about in the scripture concerning a just man according to the script? Boy, go sit down somewhere you ain't qualified to teach. And that's real. All right, Psalms 51, Psalms 51. I'm going to start in verse 8. It says, Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. This is what David was asking the Most High to do on account that he had Uriah killed and took his wife. Hmm? Lay with his wife, had him killed. She was knocked up. Baby then died. Huh? David is pouring his heart out to the Most High like, please forgive me for what I just did. Because I got horny. I had a high elevated sex drive. Uh, and it cost me. Verse, verse 10. Create me a clean heart, O Yah. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not. And take not. Thy Holy Spirit from me. Now you're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Is, is a high level. High elevated sex drive. When that high elevated sex drive is what almost got David killed. How are you going to say that? See, you're not qualified to teach just off one verse we done went to, man. And there's many more. But y'all not qualified to teach talking about the Holy Spirit is a high elevated sex drive. And that's what got David almost killed. Huh? That's not the Holy Spirit. So you can't say that was the, when, when we talk about uh, in Matthew that Mary was found with child of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And you want to say that's Joseph high elevated sex drive. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what you men are reducing the Holy Spirit to. The power of the Almighty. Genesis 1, when the spirit of the Most High moved upon the waters of the deep, the face of the waters. You going to call that a high sex drive? You men blasphemy. You men are teaching blasphemy. And you a novice anyway, man. You shouldn't even be out here running your mouth like that. You a novice. And got these little young scraps up under you. And I'm going to let you tour a nice cast. Now, I ain't hardly done with you tour a night, niggas, either. I ain't hardly done. I'm just going to address these cats.
cats who claim they messianics real quick, they lukewarm messianics. I'm here to address them real quick about they blasphemy, and I'm right back at you non-messianic toy night cats, man. I ain't I ain't nowhere near through with y'all. No, um, I ain't nowhere near through with y'all. All right, so look, Alizar, whatever your name is, look, hey, the Sakari and your whole little crew, shut down, man. Y'all done blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Basically, you saying the Holy Spirit is when men get horny, when they have an elevated, high elevated sex drive. And that's what got David almost killed. Huh? Let's see something else about the Holy Spirit real quick. Let's see something else about the Holy Spirit real, real quick. Let's go to uh, John 20. The book of John chapter 20. When the Messiah resurrected. And that's another thing. Y'all keep pumping this reincarnation. That ain't in the Bible nowhere, man. It's resurrection. It's to be harvested about the grave. And you ain't got no 200 times to come back come back here and get this thing right, man. Huh? That's It's, it's a flawed understanding that's being taught. Flawed. All right. So check this out. John chapter 20 is after the resurrection, not the reincarnation, but the resurrection. All right. John chapter 20. I'm start at verse 18. John chapter 20. I start around verse 18. All right. John 20 and 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the master and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, who are the Pharisees at that time, the Jews, came Yahweh and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Hit them with a shalom, right? And when he had and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the master. Then said Yahweh Shah to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father have sent me, even so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. But did he breathe on them a, a high elevated sex, a high elevated sex drive? Or did he breathe on them the power of the Almighty? These our brothers went from disciples, which were students, to apostles, which means sent forth with authority. Uh, once they got the power of the Most High put on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit, when when Mary asked the angel how I'm gonna conceive, and the angel tell her how she's gonna conceive, it's through the Holy Spirit. Not like the angel came and had sex with her. It was zero lust involved. What was wrong with y'all? Like how Adam was made. It was there was no sex involved. Huh? Zero lust involved. I mean, we accusing the, the angels of having sex. Boy, y'all men are carnal again. You're not qualified to teach. Shut down. Let's go to Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. Give me scriptures. It ain't nothing to it. Ain't nothing to it. We're gonna hit Luke one. We're gonna hit Matthew one. And we're gonna get we're gonna get a little deeper into it. Now we know all the spots y'all love to run. It ain't no thing, you know what I'm saying? Easy, easy work to be debunked. But the thing is that the whole Joseph is is Christ's father doctrine is a stronghold on the minds of our, our brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? It's a stronghold. It's a stronghold. So we're gonna get into it and show why it had to be what it was, you know what I'm saying? Because of certain transgressions and crimes of, of certain men in the past. Right. So don't let nobody play the Jedi mind trick like the scripture you read. Don't say what it says. It says what it says. All right. And it says what it says for a reason. All right, let's get this right. Here. Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. We'll start at verse 26. It says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from Yah into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary or Miriam. An angel came in unto her. That angel came to meet her. They came in unto her don't mean he had sex with her. It don't mean they had sex. The angel was sent with a message because angels are messengers. He was sent with a message from the Most High to the mother. Notice the angel came to the mother first, not the father. That's something else to trip off of. Joseph the father, why the angel ain't come holler at Joseph first? What the angel doing being out of order? No, nah, the angel first came to holler at Mary. Luke 1 happened before Matthew 1. She, how do we know she wasn't even pregnant yet? All right? And it says, uh, 
It said, an angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the most highest with thee. Blessed art thou among women. That don't mean go worship Mary, huh? But she about to be she about to be the chosen vessel to bring forth Yahweh Shah, the Messiah. You dig? Verse, verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Miriam. Thou hast found favor with Yah. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahawashah or Jesus as you read. Verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. The son of the highest. Then Yahweh power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Yaquab forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Mm, so she get the news saying, look, you're going to conceive in your womb. You're going to bring forth a son, call him this. He's going to be great, called the son of the highest, right? And he's going to rule over the house of Jacob forever. And he shall get the throne of his father, David. So Miriam is hearing all this, right? Remind you, she's a virgin. I ain't touched the man. Right? I ain't touched. Matter of fact, let's be more specific. I ain't touched Joseph. Because she's espoused to Joseph. You understand? So she ain't even had sex with the one she's espoused to. When the angel come to us and say, look, you're going to conceive in your womb. He's going to be great. He's going to be called the son of the highest. You're going to get the throne of David. And he's going to rule over the house of Jacob forever. All right? Verse 34. Here come the question. Verse 34. Then said Miriam unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? What man? Me and Joseph ain't even had sex. How am I going to conceive when I ain't had sex with Joseph? How? All right. So she asked a question about the conception that she just was told was going to happen. All right. She says, how am I going to conceive? You give me this, this good news, but how is this going to happen? How am I going to conceive a son when I ain't laid down? Right. What y'all accusing her of, she's saying that ain't even happened. I ain't even laid down with Joseph. Right. How shall this be? How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, you got a question. Here comes the answer. The question was about conception. Let's just be real with it. Conceiving. Wasn't about nothing else. It was about conception. She asked how I'm going to conceive. Me and Joseph ain't even got down. I'm a spouse. We ain't got down. I'm going to have a son. He's going to be called the son of the highest. He's going to be great. Throne of David and rule over the house of Jacob forever. She's like, how is that possible? Me and Joseph ain't even had sex. So here comes the answer. Here comes the message from the messenger who got it from the most high himself. Why y'all talking about this is blasphemy. You know what y'all doing? Y'all blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Y'all blaspheming the Holy Spirit. We all know ain't no forgiveness for that. So how shall this be? I don't know a man. Here come the answer. Now trip off this. Anybody teaching Joseph Christ's father, what you're going to notice in their breakdown and presentation is they can't keep reading. They got to bail out. Before you get down to the end of the story, they got to bail out and go over somewhere else and have you tripping off other verses when we ain't done with this story yet. You got to finish reading. Oh, we got a second. We got precepts. Go to Matthew 1. That's the precept for Luke 1. Mm, so watch the Jedi mind tricks. Notice anybody claiming Joseph is father, they ain't going to read through this whole story, especially in Matthew 1. They won't get down to verse 25 before they bail out. I see it happen every time. They go Matthew 1, verse 18. They probably bail out around verse 22. They dare not get down to 25 where it say Joseph didn't know Mary until she brought forth the Messiah. So yeah, they had sex, but they didn't have sex to, to uh, bring forth Yahawashah. Christ. They didn't have sex for that. He had sex with her after he was born. After the Messiah was born is when Joseph had sex with Mary. That's scripture. Right? That's scripture, right? So how shall this be being I seeing I know not a man? Verse 35, the message that the messenger got from Yahweh to tell Mary this good news. Why you talking blasphemy? Why you talking devil doctrine? Look what y'all dissing. 
Y'all, this is the message that the messenger got from Yahweh to tell to Mary. Now, why the angel ain't go to the father first? Why the angel ain't go to Joseph first? What the angel doing being out of order? What happened when the, the Samaritan woman ran up on the Messiah? He was like, look, go get your husband. I don't have a husband. You're right. You had seven of them. And the one you with now ain't your husband. So even the Messiah knew when he was out here on this earth spitting, like, look, woman, go get your husband. Huh? Why the angel ain't go to the husband first? What he doing going to the woman? Mm. Mm. Okay. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Yah or Yahweh. You see what she said? I mean, see what the uh, messenger, the angel said? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. You claiming that's a high elevated sex drive. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Right? Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of the living power. Hmm? So either the Holy Spirit is the power of the Most High or it's a high elevated sex drive like this novice is saying, call himself the Sakari. One or the other. And for all you Nick Rose claiming that Joseph is father, hey, go ahead and hey, put it on record. Put it on record just like this Nick Rose just did. At least he put it on record. Put it on record like that nigga just did and say that the Holy Spirit is when niggas get horny. Go ahead, put it on, put it on, put it on the line. See, you know better. Boy, you don't put your foot in your mouth talking like that, man. The Holy Spirit is the power of the most high. Ain't got nothing to do with Joseph getting horny. Blasphemy. All manner of sin shall be forgiven except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Hey, you ain't got no forgiveness in this world or the world to come. What's the difference between you and the Negro that called himself the uh, comforter? Taza Ducky. Jermaine, what's the difference between you and him? Y'all both lying on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what's the difference? Ain't none. And got the nerve to call the doctrine blasphemy if you believe in the holy birth or the virgin birth. And for y'all that don't know, it's not, look, the whole Immaculate Conception, all you got to do is Google it. It is a Roman Catholic doctrine that venerates and worships Mary and says Mary is the propitiation for your sins. We said, well, we'll go back to uh, Egypt, the virgin birth, go back to Egypt and uh, ancient Babylon with Nimrod and them. Stop lying, man. You know better than that. When it come down to Nimrod and his mother slash wife, huh? Nimrod had sex with his mama and, and produced Tammuz. That's not a virgin birth, right? huh? Even if you go down to Egypt, uh, Hey Ru and a, and, and a set or uh, Osiris and Isis, she found every part of this man's body but his male member. She made a dildo out of clay and played with herself and mysteriously came up pregnant. That ain't no virgin birth, man. Are you serious? So stop playing around with this thing. What we reading in Luke is not, we didn't get that from the Babylonians. We didn't get that from the Egyptians. We didn't get that from Buddha and them. Really go, go back and research all those virgin births that you think was virgin births. I'm talking about go back to the actual text. If you're talking about Buddha, go to the Buddha text. If you're talking about uh, uh, Horus and them, go to the Medu Neta and the Book of the Dead and all that. Don't be bringing me nothing that was printed up 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Go into the ancient text and show us that the virgin birth was stolen from Egypt or from Babylon. I got a book called The Two Babylons that go into the mother and the child all over the world. Huh? And it lets you know that that child sitting in her lap actually is her husband. Huh? The child sitting in her lap is actually her husband. She has relations with her son. That ain't a virgin birth. Right? Go get the book Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. That's not a virgin birth. So don't nobody tell you that either, Israel. All right? She asked how she going to conceive. The angel told her how she was going to conceive through the power of God. Zero lust. Through the power of God. Zero lust. Huh? And you run around talking about this is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. No, what you said was blasphemy. The Holy Spirit is not no high elevated sex drive. 
The Holy Spirit is the power of God. And when it's on you, the power of miracles start happening. What are you talking about? A high elevated sex drive. That's what got David almost got the kingdom took for, from him because he had a high sex drive. And we see in Psalms 51, he asked the most how to forgive his high sex drive and please not to take the Holy Spirit away from him. Boy, you's a novice. You and your whole crew need to shut down. Entire crew. Let's keep reading. Luke 1 and 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she, she, all, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, and Miriam said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Be it unto me according to your word. Nothing is impossible with the most high. Be it unto me according to your word. Now, what was the word that the angel bought? Let's go back to verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, but thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahawashah. You read in Jesus, right? Just means Savior. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And Yahweh power shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Miriam unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? I know not a man. That's Bible talk for I ain't had sex. No sexual knowledge. I haven't had sex. I'm a virgin. How am I going to conceive and have a great son? I, me and Joseph ain't even had sex. Here comes the answer. Right? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Yahweh. That's the word that the angel brought to her. She asked, how I'm going to conceive? That's the word he brought to her. Then after the angel finished saying what she said, and Mary said, behold, this is verse 38. And Miriam said, Behold, the handmaiden, the handmaid of Yahweh, be it unto me according to thy word. Mm. And the angel departed from her. And Miriam arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And this is at you IUIC characters, free case Ray and them crew, right? <laughs> that boy say, that boy say, Mary. Uh, who else stayed in the town of Judah, right? Who else stayed in the town of Judah? And the whole class said, Joseph. And he's like, oh, okay. So Mary, on her way to Zachariah's house, stopped by Joseph's shack and got her some. That's what y'all keep, that's what all y'all saying when you're saying the Holy Spirit is a high elevated level, a high elevated sex drive. All y'all saying Joseph and Mary couldn't control themselves. They couldn't contain themselves. That's what you're saying. You're saying the Holy Spirit is when niggas get horny. That's what you're saying. And even the free case Ray and them, you know what I'm saying? Because he free case people. The leader of the IUIC. And they known as being snitches, man. Stop it. Y'all, 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 this ain't the Boy Scouts. Because they all matching and shining. Y'all, oh my God, he's a prophet, man. That Negro is a snake oil salesman. But he even said, he said, uh, uh, Joseph, who else was from a city in Judah? Man, there's many cities in Judah. Boy, what is what is wrong with you? The whole class said, the whole class, like some, some parents said, Joseph. Oh, so Mary must have stopped at Joseph's shack before she got to Zachariah's house. Hold on. Why? Why? Joseph's a just man. Why ain't Mary in his house? What you mean? He going to lay with it and send her away? Do that make sense? So, but see, what, what the IUIC know is that all we got is a few verses to put Joseph up in her somewhere. You know, being they say, being the script saying Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Trip off that. So as soon as she left, she left in haste, it say. You know what I'm saying about her stopping and getting her some real quick and leaving? Huh? See, with that Joseph, 
is his father. You got to put Joseph in her somewhere because by the time she get to Zechariah house, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. Verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, hold on. She was filled with what? The Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost can't be when niggas get horny. The Holy Ghost can't be a high elevated sex drive. Elizabeth just got filled with the Holy Ghost when she heard Miriam salute her. Why? Because she was already pregnant with the Savior. And the babe, John the Baptist, or John the Immerser, started leaping in his mama's womb, filled with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist was baptized by the Messiah in his mother's womb. See what I'm saying? Before even all that water and all they got to go on, he was already baptized with the Spirit. Soon as Mary spoke and saluted Elizabeth, he got to jumping. Right? So the Holy Ghost cannot be a high elevated sex drive. It is the power of the living God, man. You know what I'm saying? And for you cats that's teaching that, y'all need to shut down. Y'all need to shut down. Anybody teaching that need to shut down. You embarrass, you an embarrassment to the gospel. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 42. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, this is Elizabeth. She spake out with a loud voice and uh, spake out with a loud voice and said, blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Look at her. She knew she was pregnant. She couldn't have been showing. She just, she, she, when she said, be it unto me according to your word, that's when Miriam received the Holy Ghost and became pregnant. That's when she conceived. The word was, you're going to conceive. And she said, well, be it unto me according to your word. That's when she conceived, right? When she accepted the mission. Then she went to Elizabeth's house, came in there, saluted her, and John the Baptist started leaping because she, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Soon as Miriam spoke because she was already pregnant, with the Messiah, right? So then now Elizabeth speaking. Elizabeth speaking. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Miriam, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. How she know she pregnant? How she know? Trip out there. And whence is this to me that the mother of my master should come to me? Not only she knew she was pregnant, she knew she was pregnant with the Messiah, the master. Mm. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. And blessed is she that believed. Believe what? The word that the angel brought her. You gon' conceive. And bring forth a son. How I'm going to conceive the power of God will overshadow you. That's how. Handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. The angel departed. She come down to Zachariah house. Salute Elizabeth. John the Baptist get the leaping. And Elizabeth know out the gate. You pregnant with the Lord. You pregnant with the Lord. My babe leaping. Mm. Verse 45. And blessed is she that believed or had faith in what was told. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the most high. And my spirit have rejoiced in Elohim, my savior. For he have regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty have done to me great things. Holy is his name. He that is mighty have done to me great things. What she talking about? She pregnant with the Lord now. Huh? Let's go over to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. I stopped at 49 on that one. Let's go over to Matthew 1. So now we know she's pregnant, right? Now we know she's pregnant. Let's get into it. Matthew 1. I'm going to start at verse 18. Matthew 1 and 18. Now the birth of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, was on this wise. This is how it happened. All right. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. He go, that, that, that Negro, that Chico the barge looking Negro going to say, that's Joseph in his high sex drive. Huh? Do y'all see the hypocrisy right out the gate? The hypocrisy of what's being said here? This man just said, Joseph, the Holy Spirit is Joseph in his high sex drive. 
Basically, Joseph got horny and couldn't control himself. Huh? But we read when, when David got horny and couldn't control himself, it almost cost him the kingdom. You feel me? And he was begging the Holy Spirit not to be taken from him. Huh? We see in John chapter 20 that the Messiah straight said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And he breathed on him. Was that a high sex drive he breathed on him? Then we just read right here in Luke chapter 1, you should, the Holy Spirit going to overshadow you. She believed and had faith. The miracle happened, right? So when she speak to Elizabeth, Elizabeth already, the babe started leaping. She's like, look, the mother of my Lord and came here. Huh? She was filled with the Holy Ghost. Was she filled with a high sex drive? You understand? It's time for you men to shut down because y'all been blaspheming, man. Matthew chapter one. As a matter of fact, before we do that, let's go to Matthew twelve. Let's show the let's go show the uh, judgment on blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Let's go show the judgment on blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Huh? Matthew chapter twelve. Matthew chapter twelve. I'm gonna start at verse thirty. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Y'all brothers are playing with fire, boy. Fire and and hopefully because you were doing it in ignorance, the Lord may have mercy on you. Like when Shaul or Paul was persecuting those that believed in the Messiah, he said he was a blasphemer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Persecuted the way, but he found mercy because he did it in ignorance. And I pray you brothers really made them statements in ignorance. Huh? But y'all little leader, that little cat claim he a chief priest or whatever, he proud man. He ain't humble. He proud. Very proud. You understand? Anytime somebody try to tell you the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is a high elevated sex drive, Zion. Know who you dealing with. I that look, look, I'm telling you, the warnings ain't go off. Huh? The red flag ain't go off. Well, what the hell to do? What the hell that boy just say? The Holy Spirit is a high elevated sex drive. And we swallowed it hook, line, and sink him. There ain't no forgiveness for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, man. You lying on the Holy Spirit. You dig? That's why men shouldn't be so quick to speak on the power of the both sides. You don't know what you don't know what's going on. Boy, you just woke up a couple days ago. That's what all of us. You know, man, look, we just woke up. And all of a sudden everybody's a scholar now. Ain't got the nerve to twist your thin fish lips and say, <laughs> the most high put a high elevated sex drive on Joseph. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, you blaspheming the Holy Spirit and ain't no forgiveness. Not in this world or the world to come. Anybody up under your kneecaps need to get the hell up out of there, man. Huh? Before somebody, hey, before judgment come down on you. Believe that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together or before, what well, it, it tell you right in their conjugal rights, before they had sex, it wasn't it wasn't before they was living together. <laughs> like, look, that boy gonna say before they assembled, uh, before they was living together. Uh, you forgot the conjugal part. And you're supposed to be a priest, man. Like, you need to be more thorough in your investigation and research. You forgot the conjugal cohabitation. Huh? Sex rights. You dig? You, you know brothers been in jail. They know about conjugal visits. Huh? So before they had sex, it wasn't before a ceremony. Before they had sex. Huh? How do we know that? What did Mary say? Well, she said, I, don't, I haven't known a man. Man, if you're going to say Joseph knocked her up, you got between verse 38 in Luke chapter 1 and verse 42 in Luke chapter 1 to put Joseph up in there somewhere. You ain't got it. She rose up in haste, went to the house of Zechariah, saluted Elizabeth. The babe started leaping, filled with the Holy Ghost. And what she say? Look, you are already pregnant. You pregnant with my Lord. So be it unto me according to your word when she accepted. 
when she didn't stagger, at, she ain't stagger at the promise. Like Abraham ain't stagger at the promise. Like Abraham didn't doubt the promise. Guess what? Here comes the miracle. Here comes the miracle. Be it unto me according to your word. Huh? And by the time she gets to Zechariah, how she already pregnant. So be like IUIC and put uh, Mary and Joseph shack on the way to Zechariah. <laughs> hey, man, y'all may need to shut down. Free case, Ray, you're not qualified to teach. Shut down. You or your whole little board members. Huh? You and all your little board members. Shut down. You're not qualified to teach, man. Y'all lying on the Lord. All right. So she was found with child of the Holy Ghost before they had sex, before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Huh? It's not a game. That's what you read. It, it ain't no Jedi mind trick. We just read Luke one. Now we in Matthew one. All right. Now trip off this. Then Joseph, her husband, I heard they go, he, he, husband, see, he's the husband. See, she was a spouse at first, but now he's the husband. Well, it was a spouse right here in verse 18. The verse before that. So now it says 19, the husband. Oh, oh okay. Y'all don't understand the laws of being betrothed. Betrothal laws. You don't understand it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You're not qualified to teach y'all. Shut down. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Hold y'all spot right there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Because an espoused woman is still your wife. You just ain't had sex with it yet, but that's still your wife. But brother, what you mean? How you gonna say that, Malachi? You know, how you gonna say that, brother? Now let's go see. Let's see what the words say. I should we'll show you. Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. Let me show you real quick what this is about. All right, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22. I'm gonna start at verse 23. We're gonna read 23 through 25. All right. Deuteronomy 22, verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto her husband and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Look, even according to your video, you pulled this. You pulled this, right? What about this? Then you shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife, neighbor's wife. Now, look, he betrothed to her, but that's still his wife. He have humbled his neighbor's wife. So thou, so thou shall put away evil from among you. You see that? You see that? Your engaged woman or your betrothed woman or your espoused woman is still considered your wife, according to the script. Not according to us. So when they say Joseph being her husband, yeah, because he was already betrothed to her. She was already promised to him. So just because it says Joseph her husband don't mean he had sex with her at that point. He had sex with her. Not until the last verse of Matthew chapter 1, after Yahweh was birthed. That's what we read, man. It ain't hard. It ain't rocket science. It only become hard when you start entertaining the Jedi mind tricks. That's what's happening. Men are entertaining these Jedi mind tricks from these snake oil salesmen. All these bro, most of these brothers is teaching that uh, one West doc. Oh, oh, they novices, man. I'm talking about 2008, 2000. Now, most of them 2012 just got into the scripture. They some novice, man. They not no deep scholars or none of that like that. They just got into this thing. You feel me? And all they doing is regurgitating that leaven that they learned from them blasphemous elders. Who predicted the world was going to end in 2000. Huh? All, all, everything you seeing on YouTube with all these cats, with all these little different camps popping up and all that, they ain't nothing but the early 1990s ISUBK. Now all they doing is regurgitating what it was that they elders learned back then. That's it. It ain't, it ain't nothing like, 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 like one of the brothers always say, it ain't nothing but the same soup warmed over, bruh. <laughs> It ain't like they done found some new scriptures to come in with something new. It's the same soup warmed over. You dig? And it's a conspiracy to downplay the divinity of the Messiah. The Messiah is divine, man. It was with his father from the beginning. How the hell are you going to compare him, an unblemished lamb, to your carnal thoughts? You know how you'll go, you'll show up with a, you know, some sunflower seeds, a little drink, huh? a little blunt or something, two in the morning. Uh, trying to get you some, leaving the club. How you going to compare 
us and our carnal mindset to Joseph being a just man in the scriptures. How? How do you do that? Where they do that at? But see, in order for you to make that doctrine fit, you got to make the crowd think that his parents, even though it says they was just, was just like our parents. And who knows how you was conceived, man? In the back seat somewhere or something. Uh, you you want to throw it in? You want to throw the conception and birth of our Messiah? You want to reduce it down to how we come forth? You know what I'm saying? Like how you can slap your girl on a girl. Come on over here. You can pour me some of that yak. Roll that L up for me. Huh? And you're going to compare the unblemished lamb of Yah who was with him in the very beginning uh, to our carnal existence here in Babylon at the very end? Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. But look, go ahead and say the rest of you cats that believe Joseph is father. Go ahead and say the Holy Spirit is when niggas get horny. The Holy Spirit is a high level of se a high sex drive. Go on and say it. Put it on record. Put your soul on it. If that's the case. But see, you know better. You know better. You know what I'm saying? You reading these scriptures and look, it still say the same thing, man. You dig? Y'all going to have to let go of all the lies. Not just some, all the lies and come on back to this truth. All right. Uh, verse 19. Read 18 again. Matthew 1 and 18. It says, Now the birth of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, was on this wise when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. All you gotta do is look it up. It's conjugal rights, conjugal cohabitation. All right? So before they had sex and was living together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Then Joseph, her husband, why her husband? Because according to betroth betrothal law, that's your wife, even though you ain't had sex with her. She's promised to you. That's your wife. So then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Wow. But while he thought on these things, he ain't did nothing. You know what I'm saying? He was thinking like, I ain't what the hell is going on? And why he thought on these things, right? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yahweh, Joseph, thou son of David, heard not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, if that's his betrothed wife, all right, and he done laid with her, and she gets knocked up, what's the crime? What the angel mean for not? How you gonna say, well, you know, just how they look down on it now, they look down on it back then. Look down on what? That's his wife, his engaged wife. It ain't no crime. If he decided to lay with it, ain't no crime. So why the angel gotta come and reassure him and say, look, man, ain't nothing been going on for not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her, that's of the Holy Ghost. Not of your high sex drive, not because you done got horny and couldn't control yourself. Hey, man, for not to take your wife, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what's in her. That's from the Lord. That's of the Holy Ghost. Not because Joseph couldn't control himself being a just man. Joseph the just who can't control his loins. What'd you say? Joseph had had uh, hot loins. <laughs> Joseph had hot loins. Uh, couldn't control himself. Utter madness, man. Now trip off this. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahweh Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Huh? So he gonna save his people, the Israelites, right, from our crimes against the Heavenly Father. Mm, so we let the angels let Joseph know, hey man, don't be scared, you good. That which is, that which is in her, that's of the Holy Ghost. Right, she gonna bear a son, call his name this, so he gonna save his people from their crimes, their sins against the Most High. All right, verse twenty-two. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, "Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us." So you you go to Isaiah seven and fourteen and say, "A virgin shall conceive," right? But because you want to debunk this so bad, you're going to say, 
Well, that word virgin there doesn't mean virgin. It just means a young woman of marital age. Yeah, but finish it off. That has never had sex, brother. That has never had sex. It's a difference between our little daughters who have never known a man who ain't even came on a flower yet. Virgin. Betula. Right? They ain't of marital age, but they still virgins. They didn't have sex. And Alma, a woman of marital age, is ready to be a wife, but she still ain't had sex. How do we know? Right, look, all you gotta do is trip off the story, but if that ain't enough for you, huh? If that ain't enough for you, read the book of Genesis, chapter 24, concerning Isaac and Rebekah. All right. Around verse 16, she's called a virgin. And around verse 40 through 43, she's called a virgin. But she didn't have sex, sex with Isaac to verse 61 on down. All right. She's called virgin twice in that chapter. Genesis 24. Read it for yourself. Don't be intellectually lazy. Read it for yourself. Genesis 24. Rebecca is called virgin twice. Right now. Now. Look up those words when you get a chance. One of them going to be Bethula and another one going to be Alma, right? And in both cases, Rebecca was a virgin that didn't have sex until she was brought to Isaac in verse 61 through 67. Then she actually had sex. So we can't, your argument that Alma don't mean a virgin, meaning she haven't had sex, just went out the window. Yeah, because it say Alma don't mean that she's had sex. And on top of that, Man, look, we're not talking about how we get down here in America like a woman walking around with uh, stretch pants on and you can see her camel toe and niggas get horny and run over cats and dogs trying to go max something. That ain't that was not the scenario. And I can in, in our situation when we in our land and all that, man, look, women are put up. Women ain't allowed just to flip flop around, whatever, wearing revealing things. But that's how you have it, have the those that listen to you believe. Just like today. You see how we do it today? That's how the Messiah came forth. Right? So if Mary wasn't no virgin, right, then what are you calling her? You calling her a hoe? Huh? What are you saying? It says a virgin shall conceive. Right? You say, go to Isaiah 7 and 14. The word for virgin there is Alma. Well, that's the word there for Rebecca too in Genesis 24. And she was a virgin all the way up until Isaac took her in his mother's tent and laid with her. She was a virgin all the way up until then. But in both cases, she was called Alma and Bethulia. Y'all go look that up, man. Y'all go look that up. All right. Verse 23. We read it. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Most High had bidden him and took unto him his wife. And said, well, she's right there. He had sex with her. Look, she was already she was already pregnant. So that means even if you saying he had sex with her in verse 24, it, she she already pregnant, meaning she already conceived. Meaning that seed ain't his. Verse 25. This is what they never get to. Verse 25. And he and knew her not, and knew her not, or didn't have sex with her. Like she said, I don't know a man. How am I how am I going to conceive? I haven't known a man. Me and Joseph ain't had sex. No sexual knowledge. Right? The same word to know comes back up in Matthew 1 and 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Her firstborn son. Her firstborn son. Yeah, Joseph had other children. A lot of y'all don't know that. Right? You thinking Joseph and Mary was the same age. Mmm. Y'all yeah, think both of them young teenagers. Now, that was Mary's firstborn son. He said, and knew her not. He didn't have sex with her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Yahushua, Jesus. You see that? So according to the record in which we reading, Joseph didn't know Mary until after Yahushua Christ was born. Right? I know one cat years ago, we had this little dialogue with some cats out of uh, California, right? Some brothers claim they down with the gospel or whatever uh, <laughs> out of California, right? And this slick Negro tried to put the word again in verse, <laughs> in verse 25. He knew her not again. I said, like, wow, you men going to go all going to go that far and add something into the scripture. 
shut down. You're not qualified to teach. I, they don't say nothing about he ain't know. He knew her not, and he knew her not till she brought forth her son again. You see what I'm saying? It don't say, and he knew her not again till Christ was born. That ain't that ain't what that say. All right, again, ain't even in the verse. Huh? But what, what do we see, Zion? The lust that men have to bring down the Messiah. And it, when it really come down to, they want his inheritance. They want to cash in on what's rightfully his. You understand? And that's not the case. All y'all want to bring y'all neck under the subjection of the Most High. You feel me? And follow his only begotten, unblemished son. All right? And when you get into the lineage, all these men had sons. They was begetting sons. So-and-so begot so-and-so. Who begot so-and-so? Joseph ain't on record begetting Christ, the Messiah, nowhere. Nowhere. You see? So you men got to really, you know what I'm saying, uh, before you be so quick to jump out there and speak certain things. Y'all need to go back to the drawing board with that, man. Y'all need to go back to the drawing board, repent, you understand, and really come out with this truth because... Uh, that boy, y'all little leader, he just blasphemed the Holy Spirit and said the Holy Spirit is basically when we get on, it's a high sex drive. Just like us, man. Just like us. And then how could he ever be the unblemished lamb? He's unblemished. Flawless. <laughs> man, utter madness. All right, we're going to drop that right there. We did the betrothal law. We did the Holy Spirit. We read the accounts of Matthew. Um, now let's get into it because the question would be then why a virgin birth, right? And what we're going to do real quick is go show, uh, matter of fact, Luke 3 and 23, and then we're going to hold this Matthew 1 as well. Because we're going to show it's two different lineages of the Messiah in the Bible. They, they don't teach on that either. They just stay in Matthew 1. Nobody goes to Luke 3 and 23, right? Two different lineages coming through David. Right. And Matthew one is David, then Solomon. And Luke three is David, then Nathan. One is Joseph's line and one is Mary's line. Now, the question is. Why is a woman's lineage needed to be mentioned in the scripture? Like, give me King David's mother's lineage in detail like we got with Mary. Give me Shem's mother's lineage in detail. Give me Abraham's mother's lineage. Give me the lineage. You know, you know what? You ain't got the lineage. Right. But there is a reason why a woman would have to prove her pedigree. You know what I'm saying? Or what line she comes out of. You understand? There's a reason, according to the Torah, why a woman would have to do that. And this would, would explain why Matthew 1 between David and Joseph and Luke 3 between David and Joseph. There are 14 different names. 14 different names. Now, how do you account for that? You would have to say Luke 3 is Mary's line. Oh, really? Well, you know, Luke 3 is in more detail than Matthew 1. Luke 3, that line goes all the way back to Adam, who was called the son of God. Showing you that's the line the son of God is coming through. Matthew 1 starts with Abraham. You know, we know Abraham go back to Adam. He said, trip off the trip off high is put down. Matthew 1 starts with Abraham, the book of the gene generations of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. But Luke 3 goes all the way back from Christ all the way back to Adam, which is called who was called the son of the living power. So not only is this is a woman's lineage, this, the lineage is in more detail than the supposed father. Why is that? What happened with the like of Joseph descend from the kings of Judah? That's easy work. Matthew chapter one, read six on down. You see David, Solomon, you see all that. Read it on down. But by the time it was time for the Babylonian captivity, there were some wicked sons of Solomon sitting on the throne of Judah. All right. And what we're going to do is go read the prophecy about what happened to them. Right. Then you will see, oh, that's why it had to come through the, through, through the line of Mary. Right. But that's a whole line of men, too. Don't get it to like it's a whole line of women. It's a whole line of men. It's just Mary's father never had any sons. All right. So Joseph was put in as the son or the son in law. You feel me? Of Heli. Because if Heli got something to pass, he would have to go to the husband of his daughter. Right. But his daughter had to marry somebody out of his tribe and out of his house. For the inheritance to pass. And that's why it's real specific dealing with Mary and her line. And how it went back from her father, then his father, then his father on back. 
You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why it's mentioned like that in, in detail. All right? All right, so let's get into this right here. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22. Let's read Jeremiah 22, 24 to 30. Jeremiah 22. All praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And honor of his only begotten beloved son, long little king, Yahoo. Yes, sir. Shout out to all the diehard messianics out there, man. Those is really pushing the gospel. You feel me? And, and ain't under bondage, you know, Negro. Sitting up under some Negro kneecaps. Huh? You are free in the Messiah. All right, Jeremiah 22, we start at verse 24. It says, It says, As I live, saith the Most High, though Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck thee thence, and I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life. And to the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. Hold, on, hold your spot right there. Remember it says Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, right? Let's go back to Matthew 1. Let's prove that this Coniah and all them were direct ancestors of Joseph. They were direct ancestors of Joseph. Mm -hmm. Meaning Joseph came out the line of the kings. That's understandable. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. But remember, we just read about Coniah, right? And then Nebuchadnezzar the king. Well, this is Matthew 1 right here, verse 11. And Josiah, which was the grandfather or father of Coniah, begot Jeconias. Jeconias is Coniah we just read about in Jeremiah 22. Right. All you got to do is do an easy web search or pull up any type of Bible app and you see Jack Conias in Matthew 1 11 is Coniah in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24 on down. Same guy. All right. Trip off this. And Josiah's begot Jack Coniah and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. We just read Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So we see that Joseph descends from these men right here. Joseph descends from these men, verse 12. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah or Coniah begot Salatiel, and Salatiel begot Zerubbabel. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 22. Back to Jeremiah 22. In Jeremiah 22, verse uh, 25. And I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life, and to the hand of them. And into the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. And I will cast thee out and thy mother that bare thee into another country where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. So we see this Matthew 1 and 11 and 12 is matching right up with Jeremiah 22. That so you going into slavery. You, I'm giving you to the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. You're going to die there. Right? Verse 27. But to the land where the two they desire to return, meaning back to Jerusalem, thither shall they not return. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Question. Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not? Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, thus saith Yahweh, write ye this man childless. What that mean? He didn't have any sons? That's a lie, because we just read we had sons. But what the childless mean? You won't have any sons to inherit the throne. Remember, this man was a king. Might as well be childless, because you won't have any sons to inherit the throne. Write ye this man childless. A man that shall not prosper in his days for no man of his seed. That means Joseph too. For no man of his seed, for no man of his seed mm, shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Now, these are Joseph's forefathers. It just said no man of his seed will rule any more in Judah or prosper sitting on the throne of David. So if these are Joseph's forefathers and y'all claiming Joseph nutted out the Messiah, then guess what you're saying about the Messiah? That he's not king. Oh, okay. Let's get a second witness. Jeremiah 36. I think it's a game. The prophecy just said that, that 
None will prosper sitting on the throne of David or ruling anymore in Judah, him and his seed. And his seed would include Joseph because Joseph descends directly from Coniah and Jehoiakim and them. He descends directly from them. So if he's the father of Christ and he descend from the kings who the most I said, none of y'all are rule anymore in Judah. Then you know what you're really saying? If you're saying Joseph is father, you're saying Yahweh Shah Mashiach ain't the king. Wow. Let's get it. Jeremiah 36. Look, not my words. The scripture said none of y'all are prosper anymore ruling in Jerusalem ever again, ruling in Judah ever again. No man of his seed. And if Joseph is of his seed, I ask the question, is Joseph uh, part of the Coniah seed? Yes, brother, yes. Well, they say no man of his seed will prosper anymore sitting on the throne of David, nor ruling anymore in Judah. So if Joseph is his seed and you're saying Christ is Joseph's seed, guess what you're saying about Christ? Mm, mm, mm. What y'all niggas saying, not us. All right, Jeremiah 36. Let me read Jeremiah 36. And I'm going to read 28 through 30. Jeremiah 36, 28 through 30. Take thee, I'm going to verse 27. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the road. And the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah saying, take thee again another road. And write in it all the former words that were in the first road, which Jehovah king, the king of Judah, had burned. And thou shalt say to Jehovah king, king of Judah. Thus say of Yahweh, not Jehoiakim and Coniah are brothers. Thus say of Yahweh, thus say of Yahweh of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. And his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and the night to the frost. You see that? So Joseph's lion can't sit on the throne of David, can't sit on the throne because of the transgressions of these men right here. No man of his seed will rule in Judah ever again. That's what the words say. Now, when we went to Matthew 1 and 11, these were the men that were sitting on the throne. Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, verse 11. And it says, and Josiah's begot Jaconias, which is Coniah, and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. We just read about Coniah and one of his brothers, Jehovah King. Ain't none of y'all sitting on the throne ever again. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah or Coniah begot Salatiel, and Salatiel begot Zerubbabel. Now we jump on down, verse 16. And Jacob begot Joseph, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahushua, who was called the Messiah. Why why don't say Joseph begot Jesus? Joseph begot Yahweh. Why don't say that? We got a long list of Jesse begot David. David the king begot Solomon. And Solomon begot Rohabon. Rohabon begot and Ezekiel begot Manasseh. And Manasseh begot Ammon. Right? And, and Zerubbabel begot Abihu. And Abihu begot Eli, Eli King. And Azor begot Zadok. And Zagat begot Akim. And Eliu begot Eleazar. And Jacob begot Joseph. Huh? The husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shah, who was called the Christ. Uh, why all of a sudden it switch up? It don't say Joseph begot Jesus. Keep it simple. Why do I switch up? Because something else didn't happen to her. You understand? So if Joseph descended from them kings and the most high and already decreed, them kings can't sit on the throne no more. Mm. All right? So let's go show. What needs to happen? Because the Most High promised to David, right? He's called this, the Messiah is called the son of David, not Solomon. He's not called the son of Solomon. He's called the son of David. Now, David had many sons, many sons, right? Uh, one of his sons' name was Nathan. And y'all supposed to know Hebrew. Y'all know Nathan or Nathan means to give, to give. Oh, okay. So what was David given? Huh? What what was the promise that the Most High gave to David? Huh? What's the promise of the Messiah that the angel gave Miriam? He about to get the throne of his father David. And those the angel came to her first. Well, let's go read about a woman passing inheritance. Certain stipulations got to take place though. Let's go to Numbers twenty seven. That's in the Torah. Numbers twenty seven. Numbers twenty seven. Numbers twenty seven. Easy work, man. Easy work. Let's do Numbers twenty seven. I'm gonna read one through eight real quick. 
book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zeholophad, the son of Hepha, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, or the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the families of his daughters, Mahala, Noah, and Haggala, Milcah, and Tizra. And they stood before Moshe and before Eleazar, the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yahweh, in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. You see? So his daughters come to Moshe. See, our father died. He wasn't with the rebels. I mean, he died in his own sin, but he never had sons. All right? Just like Mary's father never had sons. Oh, okay. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he have no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. Moshe brought their cause before Yahweh. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, The daughters of Zeholophad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. So a woman can receive inheritance, right? And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Right? The inheritance that Mary fathers had was the throne of David. Why? Because the, the sons who were the kings through Solomon, the most I said, none of y'all sit on the throne ever again. Ever again, nor rule in Judah anymore. So naturally, the promise still got to come through David, but through another son. It's just like how Reuben and them lost the birthright. Why Reuben don't got the birthright? Why Simeon and Levi don't got the birthright? In the passing on down to who? Judah. You know what I'm saying? Same type thing. He ain't got no sons. You know what I'm saying? So look, this has to go down a certain way. All right? Drop that. Let's go to Numbers 36. Couple chapters over. Numbers 36. So the inheritance got to pass to the daughters if he has no sons. All right? Let's go to number 36. Book of Numbers, chapter 36. I'm going to start at verse 5. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according children of Israel according to the word of Yahweh, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph have said, Well, this is the thing which Yahweh doth command concerning the daughters of Zolophad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So you got Joseph out the house of David, tribe of Judah, and you got Mary out the house of David, tribe of Judah. Oh, okay. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father. So Mary had to be a wife to Joseph because Joseph is out the tribe and house of her fathers. Right. He's out the uh, tribe of Judah and out the house of David. Both of them. All right. Tribe of her father that the children of Israel may enjoy every man, every man, the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as Yahweh commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zeholophad. For Malah, Terah, Hagla, Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zeholophad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. You see that? It's the same thing had to happen to Mary. Same exact thing had to happen to Mary. You understand? So now we see through the Torah, a woman can pass an inheritance, you know what I'm saying? Because her father didn't have any sons. Now, why would Mary's father uh, have something to pass? Because the line of the kings that Joseph come from was chopped. He chopped it and said, y'all ain't gonna rule ever again in Judah. And that's Old Testament. Right. So Joseph descend from those kings and it says none of the seeds of the king would ever rule again. And you saying Joseph fathered Christ. And what are you really saying about Yahweh Shah the Messiah? That he ain't the king. So here we see we had to come another way through David, but through his through his son, Nathan, which means to give on down to uh, uh, Mary's father, Heli. 
right? But he didn't have any sons. So Mary has something to pass, a possession to pass, an inheritance to pass, right? But she has to marry somebody out the tribe of Judah and out the house of David, hence Joseph. And hence why the angel came to Mary first and not Joseph first. You see what I'm saying? Because there was something to pass, which was what? The throne of Yahweh Shah's father, David, right? Which was cut by the pre well, which was cut because of the wicked behavior of the kings that Joseph descended from. Easy work, man. Ain't even hard. Ain't even hard. And there's many more scriptures involved, you know what I'm saying? But just a real quick chop shop. But look, it, it ain't hard, man. I mean, uh, everywhere where they try to go, everywhere they try to go, they'll get chopped up. All right. So we went over the betrothal law. We went over uh, what the Holy Spirit is and how it ain't no high level of sexual or high sex drive when niggas get horny. It ain't none of that. It's the power of the most high. You know what I'm saying? And we as a people we should not be trying to water down the power of the most high just to uh, fulfill our own wicked lusts. That's evil. You understand? And anybody out there teaching out of the box, look, y'all, all y'all heads finna get hit, man. Shut down. You're not qualified to teach. You're not, you're not qualified to teach. And that's just what it is. So we done read the story, right? All the way through. Show what the Holy Spirit is. Show how the Joseph's line has been cut and showed how the inheritance can still come through Mary. You know what I'm saying? If she married somebody out of her father's house and out the tribal origin of her father, in her case, Joseph. But Joseph didn't have sex with him until after Yahweh was born. Huh? He consummated the marriage after Yahweh was born. You understand? And we can get many more scriptures. I, I know y'all like to go to the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter seven. We're just going to take you over two more chapters huh? and show you the difference between because uh, he's still talking. The difference between a mortal man, huh? flesh that, that that's corruptible and how the Messiah never saw corruption. So you can't even compare wisdom of Solomon seven. You know what I'm saying? And say, well, the Messiah had to be born like this. You know what I'm saying? But we asked him. He called us. He, he's called the second Adam. How was Adam born? Was Adam born through lust? Huh? Or was he formed out the dust of the ground? Huh? The virgin dust of the ground, that is, because no man was there to till the ground. The virgin dust of the ground. You understand? So many more scriptures. You dig? We went over blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, too. I do want to kind of get that corruptible, though. Let's get that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon. Let's show y'all that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon. And then also how men are made. We'll get a couple more of these real quick because I already know the scriptures I want to go to, Hebrews chapter 2, but you don't go to Hebrews 7. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I mean, it's all over the place, man. Matter of fact, let's go there real quick. They like to go to Hebrews 2. And this is where this is what we don't, people don't do us like this. They don't go to what we saying and then try to debunk it. You know what I'm saying? They just spew madness. We're going to go to what they saying. Let's go to Hebrews 2 real quick. Couple more script. Couple more scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Made. I would say made like unto his brethren, right? You like, you still thinking backseat at the drive in action. <laughs> made like his brethren, huh? And ain't ask yourself, where are, where are we made at? What you mean, made like his brethren? Where are we made at? How and what were we made at? Not conceived, made. Made like unto his brethren, right? Hebrews 2, Hebrews 2, I'm going to read verse, uh, they read 15 through 17. It says, I'm going to read 14, for as much then, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also took himself, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that he is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their life subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, right? But how are men made? Let's go to Second Ezra chapter 8. I'll read about how men are made. Second Ezra, chapter eight. Second Ezra, chapter eight. I'm gonna start at verse eight. We're gonna read verse eight through thirteen, I believe it is. It says, "For when the body is fashioned, <laughs> when the 
when the body is made or being made, when the body is fashioned, now in the mother's womb, and thou givest it members. Thy creature is preserved in fire and water. In nine months doth thy workmanship endure thy creature, which is created in her. But that which keepeth is kept shall both be preserved. And when the time cometh, the womb preserved delivereth up the things that grew in it, the things that were made in it. But thou was commanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say, out of the breast, milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast, that the thing which is fashioned, that the thing which is made may be nourished for a time till thou disposes it to thy mercy. So contrary to popular belief, you're made in the womb of your mother. That's where you're fashioned at. The seed gets planted and you're made or fashioned in the womb of your mother. Yeah. He was in the womb of his mother nine months. Or what they call 10 months, 40 weeks. He was in, he was in the womb of his mother for like nine months. So yeah, he was made like unto his brethren. He, he didn't just appear on the scene, but he had his mother had to go through a nine to 10 month gestational period. Like all of us. Uh, okay. Verse, uh, verse 12. Thou broughtest it up with thy righteousness and nurtured it in thy law and reformed it with thy judgment. Wow. So why are you in the why are you in the belly? He's he's nurturing you in his law and his judgments and and reforming you with judgment and nurturing you in the law. Why are you being made or fashioned in the womb of your mother? And thou shalt mortify it as thy creature and quicken it as thy work. He was made like unto his brethren. You understand? But y'all do Hebrews 2, but won't go to Hebrews 7. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. You missed this one too. Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our master sprang out of Judah, and which tribe Moshe spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the likeness or similitude of Melchizedek, <laughs> there arise of another priest who is made who is made, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, mm, but after the power of an endless life. You see how the Messiah was made? After the power of an endless life, not after the law of a carnal commandment. Like how you and me got, like, like how you and me probably got hurt. Like your daddy probably slapped your mom on her rear end and said, girl, come here. That's how we got hurt. The, the Messiah was made after the power of an endless life. How do we know that? He never corrupted either. David corrupted in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ever came is corrupted in the dirt, but the Messiah saw no corruption. Huh? That's Acts chapter 2 when Peter was talking about the resurrection. He didn't see corruption, but David saw corruption, right? So when you read the wisdom of Solomon 7 and say, I'm like corruptible man. And I, look, the Messiah wasn't corruptible. He was resurrected about the grave and the works that he did uh, while he was in the flesh, man. Nobody even came close to it. They let you know he wasn't from this world. Let you know he was from above. I need Galatians 4 and 4 real quick. Two couple more scripts and I'm going to shut it down. But anybody I heard teaching this blasphemy, you're not qualified to teach. Shut down. Around here teaching all this madness. All right, Galatians chapter 4 real quick. Galatians chapter 4, right? Now, who on record be getting the Messiah? Because Joseph ain't. We didn't read that. He ain't on record nowhere be getting the Messiah. Galatians 4, but you know who is? The Father in the heavens. The Father in the heavens is on record be getting him. Like, you know how Jesse on record be getting David? And then the Most High say, I be got David. But ain't no, Joseph ain't on record nowhere saying Joseph begot the Messiah. Why? Because the Messiah is from above. He comes out the bosom of his father, man. You understand? And, and that's just what it is. Anybody trying to water down his divinity, you're not qualified to teach. Anybody trying to play Jedi mind tricks, got you thinking you can't believe what you reading in the Bible. Like you read that with your own eyes. She said she ain't know no man, right? Then you read Matthew 1 and 25, where say Joseph ain't touch her until after the Messiah was born. See, point, counterpoint. And you brothers ain't thorough in your research. Shut down. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. I'm going to read 1 through 4. It says, Now I say that the earth, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be master of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, 
when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son. The Most High sent forth his son made of a woman, made of a woman, <laughs> made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So he just said he was made of a woman. Right, we read in 2 Ezra 8, how you made, you made or fashioned in the womb of your mother. And if any of you niggas got children, you know it. You remember when you put that seed in, your, in that woman's belly and then how she just, how the belly just start growing. Mo and mo, that baby's being fashioned and formed or being made in the womb of the mother. You know what I'm saying? Not in your sack. You you ain't made nothing. I mean, you 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 planted the seed. You understand? But you ain't made nothing. The seed was fashioned and made in the womb of the mother. And Messiah, in the Messiah's case, you feel me? The Holy Spirit overshadowed or the power of the Most High overshadowed Mary. You feel me? And she became pregnant. Zero percent lust. Just like when Adam was formed and fashioned. Did the, Lord, did the Most High come down and have sex with the earth? No. No. He formed him. Zero percent lust. There was no man to till the ground. He formed him out the dust of the ground. You understand? Hence the first Adam and the second Adam. You dig? So there's a real quick hit, a real quick to let the worldwide assembly know. Don't fall for the Jedi mind tricks. These men are lying. You feel me? And they blaspheme in the Holy Spirit. And uh basically what that what what the Alazor, the uh the light skinned brother, you know, Le Chico the Barge, <laughs> La High Yellow, you know what I'm saying? Basically what he said is what y'all been saying the whole time that the Holy Spirit is when niggas get horny. The Holy Spirit, he said it. Y'all go look at the video. The video is called Debunking the So-Called Virgin Birth by the Sakari, right? Check the check at the minute marker, 24 minutes and 20 seconds, and listen on in. He gonna say, he gonna say, the most high put a spirit, and then he starts stuttering, because he knew. I knew then he's winging his answer. He said, the most high put a spirit of, 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 High elevated sexual drive on Joseph. And that's what he's calling the Holy Spirit. Huh? A high elevated sex drive. You see that? And we went right through the scripture and showed, well, David's high elevated sex drive almost got him killed. And he was asking and praying to the Most High, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Was he saying, please don't take this high sex drive from me? Now, he knew his high sex drive almost got him killed. The Messiah, after he resurrected, not reincarnated, after he resurrected, what did he say? He breathed on him and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive the power of God. Because uh, y'all apostles now going out with authority. Did he breathe on them a high sex drive? Or did he equip them with the power of God so they can go and spread this gospel? You see what I'm saying? Anybody teaching out the box head for to get hit bombs away. You understand? And any of you cats out there teaching Joseph Christ's father or teaching this reincarnation and you tore a night cast, I ain't nowhere near done with y'all. All y'all need to shut down. Y'all not qualified to teach. You understand? And look, I got plenty more scriptures, but this was a quick chop. You dig? If you really want to get more in detail and in depth, it ain't no problem, man. I'm game. You understand? So with that being said, all praises to the Elohim, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in honor of his only begotten beloved son, long little king, Yahoo, Shalom.